We call this segment of the video the building blocks because the things we are going to show you how to do are the very building blocks you'll need to build successful mechanics. The first thing I'd like to show you is the proper way to cut bar stock. To begin with, using a square, mark the stock where you'd like to make your cut. Next, place the stock in the vise with the mark as close to the vise draws as possible and clamp firmly. Firmly hold the hacksaw at both ends and saw along the mark. Next, remove your stock from the vise and deburr it with a file. The next thing I'd like to show you is the proper way to cut a piece of threaded rod. To begin with, mark your threads where you want to make your cut. Next, lightly clamp the threads in the vise so you don't crush them. Holding the hacksaw firmly at both ends, <coughs> saw through your rod. Next, remove the rod from the vise and deburr it. You'll have to make sure that you deburr the last couple threads well or the nut won't fit on. And you can do this by simply rolling the threads in a file. Then, make sure your nut fits on. I'd also like to show you the proper way to drill a hole in a piece of bar stock. These things may seem basic to some of you, but there may be some viewers who are unfamiliar with how to do these things. To begin with, with a pencil, mark your stock where you want to make your hole. Next, using a center punch, put a mark on that spot. Clamp your piece firmly in a vise, and holding the drill straight, apply firm, steady pressure on the punch mark. Next, remove the piece from the vise, and with a chamfering tool or countersink, deburr both sides of the hole. The next two things I'm going to show you, I use quite a bit when building mechanics. I especially use these things a lot when I built the mechanical head that you'll be seeing last on the video. They are bending wire and bending bar stock. Many people underestimate the usefulness of wire, thinking that it's too flimsy. But short, bent pieces of wire can be very strong and very useful when building mechanics. This is 18 gauge wire we're working with. To make a straight bend, Simply clamp onto the wire tightly with a small pair of needle nose and bend to the desired angle. To make a circular bend, find something that is a smaller diameter than the circle you want to bend and simply wrap your piece of wire around it. It's good to go about one and a half times around. The reason you need a diameter smaller than what you want to bend is because the wire will spring back open. Once your circle is bent, it can be trimmed to make a perfect circle. It can also be bent in any way you like. You can also bend wire around other pieces of wire or small pieces of threaded rod. Here we want to create a piece of bent wire with a loop at each end with an inch and three quarter between loops. First of all, we place two pieces of 1024 
threaded rod in a vise and space them an inch and three quarters apart. Next, take a piece of wire, wrap it around a first piece of threaded rod, stretch it over to the second, and wrap it around the second. Next, pull a piece of wire off the threaded rod and snip the excess off. Now you have a piece of wire with an inch and three quarters between loops and if you need to, you can bend the loop straight. Making things out of bent wire can be very helpful when building mechanics. With a little time and practice, you can make all kinds of interesting shapes like these. Bending bar stock is just as easy as bending wire, but it's not quite as flexible. To make a regular bend in a piece of bar stock, using a square, mark where you would like your bend to be. Next, place the bar stock in a vise with the mark as close to the jaws as possible. Then, applying firm, even pressure and holding onto the bar stock as close to the vise as you can, simply bend it to the angle you like. To make a circular bend with bar stock, First, simply find something with a diameter smaller than the circle you want to bend. Next, just wrap your bar stock around it. Once your bar stock is bent, it can be sawed or drilled as needed. Bending wire and bar stock can be very helpful when building mechanics, especially once you get familiar with it and learn how to do it well. Another little tip I'd like to share with you is something very simple but also very helpful. If you have two nuts on a bolt or a piece of threaded rod and you turn them towards each other very tightly, they become locked together and will not move. Now this might not seem like much, but it comes in very helpful in a case such as this, when you have a piece that in your mechanics will be moving a lot and you don't want the movement to cause the, the nuts to come apart from each other. You simply turn nuts in, lock them together, and leave the space between the two locked together nuts, the gap for your bar stock. This way, the constant movement of the bar stock will not cause the nuts to become loose. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the variety of ways there are to connect things. The first way is a very simple way. Simply drill a hole in each of the things you'd like to connect, drop a bolt through the holes, and place a nut on them. The next way to connect things is with a pop rivet gun. You can pick up an inexpensive pop rivet gun at your local hardware store. First of all, look on the package of pop rivets to see what size hole you'll need to drill to use the rivets inside. Next, drill that size hole in the two pieces you'd like to connect and place a rivet through the holes. Next, place the rivet inside a pop rivet gun and pop off the rivet. Another way to connect things is with an electric glue gun. I'm not going to demonstrate how to use a glue gun, but I would like to let you know that glue guns work best on porous materials such as wood or fabric, but they can be used successfully on non-porous surfaces such as metal or plastic. As long as you take a file 
and scratch up the non-porous surface that you're gluing so the glue has something to adhere to and hold on to. The last connection we're going to show you how to make is by the use of tapped holes. This is a tap and what a tap is is a small tool made for cutting threads on the inside of a hole. You can purchase taps at your local hardware store. Usually on the tap itself or on the package that the tap comes in will be listed the hole size you need to drill in order to use this tap. You can get a tap for almost every size thread. To use the tap, simply drill a hole in the piece that is the correct size. Place the piece in a vise and clamp it tightly. Place the tap in a tap holder that you can also find at your local hardware store. And then very easily turn the tap into the hole. Now you don't want to force it. If it gets tight, back it off slightly and let it break the chips out. You might even want to put a few drops of oil on there. Turn the tap all the way through and then turn it back out. Now you have threads on the inside of your hole. You can take another piece, put it on top, and tighten the screw down through your threaded hole. This comes in very handy when building mechanics. Before we wrap up this segment on building blocks, there is one thing I'd like to stress. Please don't reinvent the wheel. And what I mean by that is around you every day there are hundreds of neat, ingenious, and usually inexpensive contraptions that you can use in your mechanic applications. For example, say you were building a small creature and you needed a small set of hinges to build the jaw. You could spend a lot of time and money constructing the hinges yourself, or you could go down to your local dime store and pick up a cheap pair of sunglasses like these and use the hinges out of these. So you have to break apart a good pair of sunglasses in order to get these hinges, but look at the time and the money you've saved by not building them yourself. And the good thing is there are hundreds of these neat kind of things around you every day. What you have to do is break the habit of using things for what they're intended for. Another neat thing is this little device called an egg ring. It's used to, for when you're cooking eggs so that your eggs stay round. It's a piece of bent bar stock that has a little handle on it that pivots. I'm not sure what you can use that for, but it sure looks neat and I'm sure you can come up with something. Another neat thing is this little device. This is called a tea infuser and I picked this up at a kitchenware store for about three dollars. Many people have these and they don't even realize that they would be perfect for a small set of jaws on a little creature. Even if you only use this little hinge here, it's still worth three dollars. Another neat device is this spring-loaded retriever. I picked this up at, a, at my local hardware store for about three or four dollars. What this is, it's a little device that has a cable going through it and a little spring-loaded spring -loaded handle on this end. When you squeeze the handle, a little set of jaws comes out of this side. This is very handy for picking up little nuts and bolts that you've dropped when working on your motor of your car, but it can also be very helpful for controlling the lips or the eyebrows of a creature. The good thing is there's all kinds of these things around you. What you have to do is develop the habit of looking for these things, looking for these neat devices that are around you every day, and trying to find ways that you can modify them to fit your mechanical needs. The good thing is all the hard work and effort is already spent in building these things. All you have to do is use them. Now, before we actually get into building a mechanical head, there are a few other things I'd like to go over with you. The first of them is design.